Welcome again. Right now we're at the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 12, all the way through to the end of the chapter, verse 26. And this is talking about Matthias replaces Judas. Now, you know, some of you think that Paul replaced Judas. You know, Paul is one of the apostles. But you know, the word apostle means sent one. Okay, so yeah, we got the 12. We got the 12 chosen disciples. We got the 12 chosen apostles. But there are many other apostles. You know, by, the, by definition of the word, everybody that's sent of the Lord is an apostle. I mean, you can say Isaiah was an apostle of the Lord. You can say, you know, Moses was an apostle of the Lord, okay? So just because Paul calls himself an apostle doesn't mean that he's one of the 12. So let's get right into this. This is Acts chapter 1, verse 12. They returned to Jerusalem, Jerusalem from the mountain called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had come in, they went up into the upper room where they were sitting. That is, Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. For those of you who are new to this, you know the word Judas is actually the word Judah, Yehuda in the Hebrew. Verse 14, all these with one accord continued steadfastly in prayer and supplication along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Now, wouldn't that be some prayer meeting? Here we've got the apostles. We've got the 11 apostles here with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Can you imagine? Can you imagine this? And, you know, and the brothers of Jesus as well, okay? What an awesome prayer meeting this would be. Verse 15, in these days, Peter stood up in the middle of the disciples. I need to say this right now. I mean, Peter's always the one that's standing up and speaking. He's the one that stood up, you know, you know, when Jesus called him out on to walk on the water, he's the one to say, you know, that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. He's the first one to speak up here. You know, he's the first one to say at the last supper, you know, I will never forsake you, Lord, you know. You know, he's very quick just to stand up and just, you know, make his presence known, so to speak. And the number of names was about 120 and said, Brothers, it was necessary that this scripture should be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was guide to those who took Jesus. For he was counted with us and received his portion in this ministry. Now this man obtained a field with the reward for his wickedness and falling headlong, his body burst open and all his intestines gushed out. It became known to everyone who lived in Jerusalem that in their language that field was called Akeldama, that is, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be made desolate, let no one dwell in it. And that is found in Psalm 69, verse 25. And let another take his office. Psalm 109, verse 8. Notice that it said Judas had a curse upon him. Let his habitation be made desolate and let no one dwell in it. Watch out. Let the fear of God always abide on you, okay? You see, Judas he didn't have the fear of God. I mean, he, he did one of the worst things he could ever do. You know, God is always watching and God will make you repay. Okay? He will make you pay. And sometimes it can be really, really harsh. Okay? This is what happened to Judas. Verse 21, Of the men, therefore, who have accompanied us, all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to the day that he was received up from us, of these one must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they were looking for someone who was with them all the time from the days of John the Baptist up until that time. They were looking for, well, you might say seniority. They were looking for experience. You know, they just, they weren't willing to just take any Joe Blow, you know. 
Verse 23, they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. They prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all men, show which one of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas fell away, that he might go to his own place. They drew lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was counted with the eleven apostles." So it's very important here to understand that Matthias was the one chosen of God, wasn't Paul. There's no evidence whatsoever that somehow Matthias lost his position. When the Lord chose Matthias here, and he did through the casting of lots, through the prayers of the apostles, when the Lord chose that Matthias, he wasn't making a mistake. He was making a good choice a permanent choice, a choice that would last, okay? This was not another Judas anymore. This is not someone that would be temporary. This was permanent. And I say that because there's no evidence of it not being permanent, okay? Just because Paul comes around later on doesn't mean anything. They didn't even choose between Paul and Matthias, okay? Because Paul was not qualified to even replace Judas. If God wanted to, he could have saved Paul right from the very beginning, or he could have saved Paul during the ministry of Jesus, but he didn't. He didn't save Paul until afterwards, okay? So that is further proof that Paul does not belong with the 12, okay? There were strict requirements to be part of the 12. You had to have been with Jesus from John the Baptist until the resurrection and until this point in time in history. Paul wasn't there, okay? He was not qualified. So my prayer is that God would, would fill you with his presence, with his love, but also with his fear. If you don't have the fear of God, then you don't have wisdom at all, okay? That's what the Bible says. The fear of the Lord is just the beginning of wisdom. You need the fear of God in your life. And, you know, pray that. You make that your prayer. Oh, God, whatever it takes, put the fear of God in me permanently, permanently. Whatever it takes, do whatever it takes. Fill me with the fear of God. And as always, as you seek him, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things.